Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're unboxing Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet, and this is the third generation model. They announced it at CES. Uh, I did re I did review the second generation model last year, and it was actually one of the first ThinkPads that I reviewed. And while I loved it, it did have its shortcomings, such as a Core M or Y series processor, which is what Intel's calling it now. The M5 and the M7 have been rebranded to i5 and i7 Y series, and um, the screen was a little small. The kickstand, um, it wasn't a great kickstand. And um, pretty much all that stuff has been resolved with this year's model. So I'm pretty excited to, to review this. So let's get this open. And we can see here's the device, the, the tablet itself. And what we can see is that the screen is a little bigger this year. It's 13 inches now. You can see the, the box was a little open when, when I got it, so this unit has likely been reviewed by someone else, which is fine and normal. But uh, we have the, the fingerprint reader over here still. And um, yeah, so the screen's a little bit bigger. We have a U-series processor, so big upgrade in the processor this year. The the M3 and the i5 and i7 Y series, they're all dual core. In fact, last year's U series was dual core as well. This year, the U series is quad core. So we have an upgrade from a dual core 4.5 watt chip to a quad core 15 watt chip. Now, U series, the 15 watt chips, that's what you'll typically find in any ultra book. And we're starting to see more and more tablets and these, these slimmer form factors use that U series uh, because the, the, the Y series is really underpowered for uh, many use cases. So here we have the keyboard, and it does come with everything. Unlike a, a Surface Pro, which you would need to buy the keyboard and the pen separately, this should come with everything that you need. And that was one thing that I loved about the X1 tablet second generation is the keyboard. This is actually a very sturdy keyboard to type on compared to a type cover from a Surface Pro. So let's see what else is in here. All right, lots of lots of stuff in this package, I gotta say, and uh, it's it's kind of interesting how they package this stuff. All right, so here is the ThinkPad Pen Pro, and we have a quadruple A battery in here for it. I prefer rechargeable pens, and I'm starting to see that's a little more popular these days with um. Huawei had a rechargeable pen. HP's newest pen is rechargeable with USB Type-C, and, and that's starting to be become more of a popular option. And that's what I prefer. So we have a pen loop here. The reason I prefer a rechargeable pen is because you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you're on the road and that, that quadruple-A battery runs out. Power cable. I assume that the power brick is somewhere else. There's some paperwork in here, too, that we're not going to look at. And yeah, here's the power brick, should charge through USB Type-C, and there you have it, USB Type-C. So now let's power up the device. All right, so here it is, powered up. Over here we have two USB Type-C ports. So um, the specs that Lenovo lists on its website, it says two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, and then it also says Thunderbolt 3. So... I'm guessing that one's an option. It doesn't, I, I'm really not sure which one this is. It should be Thunderbolt, I believe, based on the, the icons. But um, here's the difference. USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, is 10, 10 gigabits per second with a display port lane. Thunderbolt 3 is 40 gigabits per second. So big difference there. However, Gen 2, USB 3.1 Gen 2 is actually kind of rare where... Typically, what you see in non-Thunderbolt USB Type-C ports is Gen 1, which is 5 gigabits per second. So, that is impressive. And there are also many Thunderbolt 3 ports that are chopped down to 20 gigabits per second. Only two lanes are active. So, I can't, I, I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm not completely sure what those two ports are. They're USB Type-C ports, and you can charge the device with them. Um, over here, I should say also, we have a sim card slot and what's interesting about that right here is that the device the the cellular connectivity is actually optional and just because there's a sim card slot does not mean that this uh supports cellular because i have seen many thinkpads where they actually ship the sim card slot 
even if there's no cellular connectivity. So they all kind of go in the same body. So we'll, we'll find out more about that when I try to put a SIM card in there, to be honest. Uh, over here, we have our power button. We have our volume rocker, which volume rocker is pretty standard for a tablet. Uh, it kind of upsets me that they don't put that on the convertibles, but uh, it's cool. And oh, one more thing. The kickstand actually is new. This is one of those pain points that I mentioned on the last model, the the, the second gen. On the second gen, the, the, the kickstand actually flipped down, which made it hard to use on your lap, and it made it hard to keep it kind of steady. So now we can push this all the way back and put it at pretty much any angle that you want. So that's a, a big improvement from this year. Again, I do want to stress that this is probably one of the best tablet attachable keyboards that you're going to come across. I've never been a big fan of the Surface type covers because really they just kind of, they feel like they kind of rattle underneath and this is very sturdy. It's backlit. Um, oh, by the way, this, the Surface type covers are also backlit, but it's, it is, it's really just one of the best tablet attachable keyboards that you're going to come across because that they're, to me, it's something that, that not a lot of companies have really done well yet. And Lenovo has. And Lenovo, one of my favorite things about ThinkPads is that they tend to fix things that, uh, are minor pain points to users. So going back to the keyboard, which I always love ThinkPad keyboards. Look at the X1 Yoga where, when you convert it into a tablet, these keys actually retract. And it's one of those minor pain points that, that Lenovo seems to work out in ThinkPads a lot. And that's really why they charge a premium on these. Um, this has a Core i7-7650U processor, which means that it is vPro. Uh, the ships with Windows 10 Pro. And... Like I said, a lot of improvements over last year's model. 13-inch display is now 3,000 by 2,000. Right, it's a beautiful screen. This is going to have Alexa support because there are far-field voice microphones. However, it does not ship with Alexa, and it should show up as a software update at some point. And that should arrive through the Lenovo Vantage application, which is where you would get your drivers and, and firmware updates because those don't come through Windows Update. The only thing you get through Windows Update is Windows Updates. So if we look on this side, uh, underneath the kickstand is where we'll find uh, the slot to pop the pen loop in, which is uh, kind of a pain, but it's meant to be tight, I guess, so the pen doesn't fall off. So yeah, once that goes right in there, there's our slot for the pen. And um, I'm not a huge fan of pen loops, would have been great if, if we could, uh, do you want to configure pen? No, I don't. Not right now, at least. Uh, BIOS update. Would have been really cool if Alexa just showed up right now because we'd have a story to break. Because I keep trying to get Lenovo to tell me when, when the Alexa update is coming because there are three X1 ThinkPads on the market. X1 is, is the flagship brand and the Carbon, the Yoga, and the Tablet. I've already reviewed the Carbon and the Yoga. I've reviewed, I'm currently reviewing the Yoga 730. All these are supposed to get Alexa support at some point, and it just hasn't arrived yet, and they won't tell me when it's coming. So hopefully soon on that, because I'm running out of stuff to review with the, with Alexa support that's just not there yet. But speaking on the full, the full ThinkPad lineup, like I said, there are three X1s currently, at least. Those are the flagship models, and then there are about ooh, eight, other ThinkPads that were refreshed at CES. That's the, the X series, the T series, and the L series. So you have the T480, the T480S, the T580. Those are more workhorse type of things. And um, there's also the P series, which was not refreshed yet this year. Those are mobile workstations. So those are the, you know, you got the 45 watt H series processors, Quadro graphics, and, um, so this is the X1. This is the X1 tablet, and it's it's meant to represent the best of what ThinkPads have to offer right now. Okay, so like I said, it does have the far field voice mics, which will work for Alexa eventually, but they'll also work for Cortana. So at some point, you're going to be able to call the voice assistant you want and, and get that voice assistant. So we can see 
Um, again, no Alexa. No extra software. No McAfee. The only extra software you're getting is what Microsoft puts on there, like Candy Crush Saga, Candy Crush Soda Saga. And um, I'm really a big fan of when they don't add McAfee. McAfee, to me, is one of the worst things that an OEM can put on a device. All right, and as far as the pen loop goes, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I, I like that idea. There, there are various different ideas for, for what you can do with a pen. Uh, Microsoft with the Surface attaches it magnetically. It just snaps to the side. Dell does the same thing with the XPS 15, 2, and 1. Magnetic is becoming very popular, but my problem with that is a lot of times you'll just throw the, you'll just throw the laptop in a bag and the pen falls off and it's at the bottom of your bag. You got to dig it up. You might lose the pen at some point, and these pens aren't cheap to replace. Uh, I believe this one is seventy nine ninety nine. Don't quote me on that. I know the Surface Pen is ninety nine ninety nine. So if you lose, you don't want to. I'm not a fan of of pen loops, particularly just because they stand out. It's it's out there. What I really like is on the ThinkPad X1 Yoga, where it's actually there's a spot embedded in the device, and you just kind of tuck it in there, similar to what you would do on a Samsung Galaxy Note phone. So. I, I understand that they want a they want a full size pen because the the one thing that you get with a pen that's embedded in the device is that it's it's smaller, and here you have a full size pen that you can use, and you can draw on it too because you can put this at any angle you want and you can use it, which is again pretty cool. So to wrap this up. We have the larger screen this year, 12.5 inches to 13 inches now, and that's 3,000 by 2,000. The screen is a little bigger. Uh, the processor is better, which is a huge difference from a 4.5 watt dual core Y series processor to a, a full 15 watt quad core U series processor. And so this is on par with any Ultrabook that you have out there. Uh, the kickstand is a lot better. That's a huge pain point that they solved. And um, it's about it. It's uh, it. It seems like they fixed everything this year. So so I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about it. So I'll have more on this in a few weeks. And um, so stay tuned. I'm Rich from Neowin. Have a great night.